I did something really stupid. The title is not a clickbait. I accidentally bought a fake S23 Ultra. It's just arrived, so I've decided to give it a go. Today, we see how close they got to the real thing. Let's go. Hello, welcome back to Tech With Benefits. Bit of a fun one this week. So, you know, I don't know if anyone does this, but sometimes I jump onto Wish Dot com and I just I'm I'm curious I just browse so when I was on there I was just browsing and I wanted to see oh huh, are there any fake S23 ultras floating around but of course you can't just type in S23 ultra they're too smart for that so you just have to write in smartphone and oh boy there is just a list and bevy of smartphones that they are copying on the market right now I found a series of fake S23 ultras and I found and navigated myself to one I thought looked hilarious. It said S40 Plus Ultra. I thought, okay, they're definitely going after the S23 Ultra here. And sure enough, when I clicked on the link, that's exactly what they were going for. What I was trying to do, I had a discount code from Wish, and all I wanted to do was see how much the phone would be when I applied the discount code. So I got all the way through to the checkout page and I put in the code and I went to press apply. However, instead of pressing apply, I hit checkout and then I tried furiously to back out of it, but it was too late. It processed. I got the confirmation email. Your delivery is being prepared. Great. So I forgot about it. I just put it out of my mind and went about my life. I went away on holiday with my wife. I played around with the kids. We had school holidays. All this stuff happened. And then it arrived. Three to four weeks later, the package from Wish showed up at my doorstep, which is quite fast considering it's wish well it's a miracle it got here at all so i i was like okay i'm gonna give this thing a go see what it's about because on the website they promised some big numbers and we'll get to those in just a moment so first thing to do was open it up and look to be honest it's not a terrible bit of packaging it was definitely properly wrapped it had lots of really like premium sort of bubble wrap protecting the box and once you get sort of through all of that, the box itself, they've done a good job of making it sort of feel and look a bit like a Samsung box. And the first thing I noticed was how big it was. It was thick. It was like kind of the way the S20 Ultra box used to look like, which was, of course, had your charger and your case and all the other goodies in it. So I was excited. Well, that's a real phone with real stuff inside. So I opened it up and lo and behold, all of the goodies are in there. Of course, you've got the, the phone but you get earphones because it's got a headphone jack. What? You've got the case that it comes with. It's not a, not a great case, but it's in the box and it comes with the phone. For, I mean, for 160 Australian dollars, that's not bad. You also get, and this is so funny, their copy of the S Pen. It's just a stylus. There's nowhere for it to go inside the phone either and whatever. But you get all these little stuff in the box and I was quite impressed that they managed to pack all of these contents in inside the cost that it, that it was. Not that they're good or premium materials, no way at all. However, still impressive that they were able to fit all of those in there for the price point that it was. And with all that, I thought, you know what? This is great. I've got value for money so far, especially when we consider the specs that they were promising. Allow me to run through some of the, the claims they made on their website. So as I said, it's called the S40 Ultra. So they're living uh, a few years in, in, the, in ahead. And straight away, that main picture is 6.8 inch HD display with 16 gigabyte of RAM and one terabyte of internal storage with a, a never before seen 6,800 milliamp hour battery inside. You just know that's not true. Everything is in the pictures. So look, well, not everything, because whilst the picture above has 6,800 million hours. The picture below has 5,000. So again, discrepancy. Also take note, it says Opera Android 12. So just keep that one away for later. As you scroll through, you can see the first thing you notice there is it tells you some camera information. So it's got here 16 megapixel plus 64 megapixel. Sure. Global 5G LTE. I'm not even gonna put my SIM card in this. So we won't ever know, but I can guarantee it doesn't have 5G connectivity. 
And then it goes on to a, being a big screen phone, 6.8 inches. And you can see there from the display, there's like no bezels. Just quickly, we'll snapshot this. You can see that's not what the phone is. That is not even close to what the phone is, but we'll get to that in a moment. So it's dual SIM and it's got a micro SD card slot. GPS, okay. Face recognition, haven't even bothered to try. Fingerprint scanning, so it's got an under display fingerprint scanner. Wow, for 160 bucks, an under display fingerprint scanner. That's crazy. It's got a 10 core processor with a picture of the Snapdragon 888 Plus. Hmm. Again, reiterating the 6,800 milliamp hour battery, a 93% screen to body ratio with that 6.8 inch screen. And then the 16 gigabyte of RAM. <laughs> okay. A 16 megapixel front facing camera, which sounds pretty standard or reasonable. I mean, you see a lot more high resolution, but this one got me 64 million HD rear cameras. What? It came in three colors, black, white, and gold. I think I chose the black color. I can't even remember. And that's it in a nutshell. It definitely paints you this picture that it's this premium high-end phone. So they're great. Let's give this a try. Let's go out in the world and use what it says is amazing feature set. So I did that. I took it around and took photos. I took it around and looked at the design outdoors. I really tried to give it a go. And that was when everything came crashing down. The phone is awful. It is just straight terrible. One, the design. It's very clearly fake. The cameras on the back are almost like just stickers at this point. While we're here, let's showcase how the cameras actually work. They're terrible. Like they are just straight up awful. Not only is it incredibly slow to capture photos, the preview window is terrible. You have uh, what I found really funny at the top, a button for HDR, which from what I can gather does zero. But what actually does zero is the modes down the bottom. They've listed off all of these legacy Samsung features, Pro Mode, Live Focus, which hasn't existed for three or four years. A whole bunch of other stuff that you can see down the bottom, Night Mode, but they're actually just there at, by name. They don't have any function whatsoever. But then when you switch to video, it basically just changes to a different camera app. It's again, it's just there as a placement. And again, the same problem happens. So I wanted to do some investigating. Well, what is these cameras actually all about? Turns out they're not great. So I downloaded some uh, apps that tell you a bit of information about the phone. Obviously it shows a lot of rear cameras. Only one of them are real, that one. So the main rear camera, the only rear camera is a five megapixel camera, not a 64 million HD camera. So that's not real. Selfie camera. 1.9 megapixels, not 16. Like obviously we as smart people or just people in general will clue onto that, but there are probably people out there who would be fooled by that advertising and they would go for it. So just letting you know. So now that I know the cameras were basically not real, what else was there about this phone? That's garbage. Well, for starters, it says it's running Android 12. It's not. It's running Android 8.1 Oreo. On first glance, the software actually looks quite impressive. Like they've managed to nail some of the, the icons for the apps that definitely got the navigation button sort of look and feel down pat. So in a sense, you know, the wallpapers are there. Great. It even has uh, S23 Ultra plastered throughout the software. So you get that feeling like that's what it is, but it is absolutely just a stock plain version of Android with some customization for whatever they've done here. It is definitely not Android 12. And I guarantee you there's no software updates that will be coming to this phone. The other thing I really wanted to try was the fingerprint scanner on the display. Wow, same thing. It's basically just a picture of a fingerprint. Any finger that gets put over that picture of the fingerprint will unlock it. It doesn't matter whether it's yours, someone else's or who's registered, it will unlock regardless. And the reason why it's so bad at operations is because it is not using a Snapdragon 888 plus processor. It does not have 16 gigabytes of RAM with one terabyte of internal storage. 
but it doesn't even go close. It is using a spread drum SC7731E with four cores and a max clock frequency of 1300 megahertz. Next, its RAM is only one gigabyte. That's a sixteenth of what was promised in the ad. Its internal storage is 4.7 gigabytes. So again, you're just you're so far off the mark here with what you're promised versus what you're getting. And I know, I know that. I knew it was that was going to happen before I even got it. I just found it really funny that that was what they were pushing. Now the hard thing was I couldn't find any stats on the battery. They've managed to convince whatever apps I've downloaded that it's a 6,800 milliamp hour battery. Future Dan here. Turns out I was able to figure out the battery capacity. I downloaded some app from the Play Store. It needed to calibrate or something. Anyway, turns out its estimated capacity is around about 2,281 milliamp hours. Much short of the promised 6,800. Anyway, back to the video. Short of tearing this phone apart, which I'm not too far away from doing. If you want me to do that, uh, drop a like and leave a comment below and I'll do a separate video where I take it apart because I'm not, I'm not keeping this thing. So it doesn't really matter to me. So let me know what you think in that regard. And the last one to debunk was the display. I think just by looking at it, you know that it's not a 6.8 inch display, but what size is it actually? So the stats are, it's a 720p display. So that's already terrible. It's 5.46 inches. That's a whole lot smaller than 6.8. Plus with the bezels, it's a bigger phone with a smaller screen. Shady stuff all around with this situation. So I'll leave you with this. Don't buy this. Don't buy phones from Wish. Buy phones from anywhere else but Wish because you're not getting what you're paying for. Obviously, you know that $160, you're not getting 16 gigabyte of RAM and one terabyte of internal storage. You can't even buy an SSD with that price anymore. So don't do it, <laughs> please. But I've done it now, so you don't have to. Well, that's it for this week. Another one gone. Thank you very much for tuning in. And like I said, if you really are liking what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button, uh, like the video as well, turn on the bell icon, and between now and my next video, come hang out with me on Twitter and Instagram. Particularly Twitter, I'm quite active on there. Maybe a bit too active. I don't know if you can, I don't know if that's a thing, being too active on Twitter. Anyway, thank you very much. See you next week. Yo!